Hello, my name is Milda Zizita from the National Robotics Engineering Center and Carnegie Mellon University, and I am here to present our work on robustness inside out testing. To motivate this work, we use our expertise of testing over 25 autonomy systems in the last decade. In doing so, we confirm the conventional wisdom that failures are easier to find in unit tests rather than full system tests. However, we need to decide which of these failures are the most relevant and need to be fixed first. Our project, Riot, can determine which of the unit level failures can be activated at the system level and therefore can more readily present themselves in the actual systems and so must be prioritized. In this presentation, I will talk about our testing approach, including a brief overview and the four testing steps. I will then talk about an example that illustrates these steps and finally, I will conclude. Let's begin with the testing approach. The main idea of Riot is that we trace unit level failures to system level interfaces to find which bugs present the most risk. This is illustrated by the Swiss cheese model, a concept from the security space. It represents the basic concept of tracing bugs through a system as inputs pass through layers of the system and are transformed. The challenges of this data path are that values can be transformed at every layer, the system introduces non-determinism in the transformations, and the exact data path is unknown. The Riot toolchain addresses these challenges using an automated four-step process. In Riot, we start with unit-level robustness testing, then generalize the test case to a unit-level rule, and use this rule and permeability analysis to produce a system level input that activates the bug externally. Each of these steps produces an artifact that on its own is useful for debugging. The first step of the toolchain is robustness testing at the unit level. Testing at the unit level requires less complexity overall and therefore may be more efficient at finding bugs. This black box testing approach, which comes from our previous work in the ASTA project, takes a system log of nominal behavior and mutates the inputs by replacing a fraction of the field values with exceptional values such as NAN, null, negative one, and so on. We intercept at the message passing interface using a nominal log because autonomy systems present a testing challenge as they are temporal, stateful, and cyber-physical. By replaying this perturbed log on a system, we have an effective way of exercising the system under test. We check the system output against invariants, which are properties which must always hold true in order for the system to be considered safe. Any violation of an invariant is a bug. This step produces a replayable failure-inducing input log at the unit level, which is useful on its own to make bug reports about the unit components of a system. The second step of the Riot toolchain is generalization, which takes the single unit level failure inducing log from the robustness testing step and expands it to a unit level rule. This is done in three sub steps. First, minimization uses the delta debugging algorithm to iteratively reduce the large initial failure inducing log to a minimal set of messages. Second, relevant field identification finds the fields within the set of messages that contribute to triggering the failure. That is, if changing the value of a field changes the outcome of a test, we can conclude that field is relevant. It is important to check non-perturbed fields in the step because they may contribute to the failure. Finally, unit-level rule extrapolation systematically alters values on the field to discern a set of failure-causing values. We then apply machine learning techniques such as decision trees to derive human readable rules that define that set. The generalization step produces a unit level activation rule that is useful for debugging the unit level failure. For example, discerning the bounds on the fields that cause a failure to manifest can help narrow down the place in the code where the failure occurs and how to fix it. In order to start finding how a unit level rule can be activated at the system level, the permeability step methodically perturbs external system level inputs to see which ones affect the internal unit level fields. Effectively, this is finding a causal link between the external inputs and the internal signals identified by generalization. Because message passing through the layers of an autonomy system can be thought of as a noisy, costly black box, this step presents a challenge. 
we use machine learning techniques to detect the sensitivity of internal unit level signals to perturbations of external input. This step produces a mapping of unit level fields of interest to the system level input field. The final step, activation, uses the outputs from the generalization and permeability steps to find a set of external level inputs that activate the internally triggered violation. By knowing which unit level fields cause the failure and knowing which system level fields affect these unit level fields, this step focuses its exploration on the relevant system level fields to guide the system towards the original failure. We can treat the step as an optimization problem that minimizes the distance between the current output of a system and the unit level generalization rule. For example, if the bug occurs when a particular unit level field is negative, we can use global optimization to change the values of external inputs such that the internal value gets closer to negative. If a failure can be activated at the system level, we know that it matters for debugging because it may present itself in real operation and must be fixed. The activation step produces the main artifact of the Riot toolchain, which is a replayable log of system level inputs that can trigger the failure that was originally found at the unit level. To give a quick summary of the testing tool, we start with unit level robustness testing, which produces a log of test inputs that can be replayed to trigger a unit level failure. Using generalization, we expand the single failure causing input to a unit level rule of inputs that can trigger the bug. Permeability analysis explores the data paths through the layers of the system and gives us a mapping of system level to unit level inputs. Finally, activation uses the permeability and generalization steps to guide the relevant system level fields to a set of inputs that can trigger the failure we originally found at the unit level. To show this toolchain in action, we present an illustrative example on the ClearPath Robotics Husky robot. Because Husky is an autonomous rover, it has a system architecture that includes a move-based node, which moves the robot based on the global cost map and local cost map updates. In the robustness testing step for Husky, we test the move-based node by mutating the map and map update input messages to that node. We discover a failure on this node that results in a segmentation fault, memory corruption, or map corruption. By taking the failure-causing input log from the previous step, we reduce the input to a single map updates message and then the map updates.x and y fields within that message. We derive a unit level rule that shows that this particular bug occurs when these fields are generally negative or very large, as shown by the lavender regions to the right. The area of this graph represents the input space of the map updates x and y fields, and our tool determined the boundary of the crash region by intelligently sampling values in the space. Note that this exploration step was made more efficient because we had minimized the input down to the relevant fields, which significantly reduced the search space. The goal for, of the permeability step is to therefore find system level fields that affect the relevant fields map updates.x and y. We first identified the possible external interfaces that could eventually reach the move based node as based on the Husky architecture. We then use feature-based classification to identify several system-level fields that are permeable, meaning they affect the internal map updates X and Y signals. These include the X and Y linear twist fields and the X and Y goal fields. Now, we must try to activate the bug externally using those system-level fields. From the permeability step, we know that changing the goal point changes the map update field. We can think of this as an optimization problem that minimizes the distance between the map updates values and the failure causing region. This step changes the external goal fields in a way that gets the map updates values closer and closer to the region and eventually finds a specific set of external goal points in the lower part of the map that can trigger the failure as illustrated on the right. This graph is a zoomed in version of the total input space. And so the lavender area is, in actuality, very small. Fuzzing would not have hit this area in a reasonable number of tests, and dictionary-based robustness testing would not have found it at all. By working backwards from a unit level failure, however, Riot did. With that, let's wrap it up. 
We presented robustness inside-out testing, which finds bugs at the unit level and shows how they can be activated at the system level. This is a measure of bug relevance and helps teams prioritize bug fixes. Riot uses a four-step automated toolchain and machine learning approaches to achieve this and provides useful outputs at each of its four steps. Our illustrative example on the Husky system shows how Riot can find bugs that would not have been found using a basic robustness testing approach at the system level alone, and is therefore a useful and novel way to test systems. Thank you.